For many people, the American dream can be summarized by being able to buy your own home. In fact, home ownership is the single largest predictor of what your overall net worth is going to be. The net worth of your average homeowner is about a quarter of a million dollars, while that of a renter is only about 6,000 bucks. But being able to purchase a home often comes with a variety of difficult to achieve prerequisites like having money for a down payment, credit score, income levels, debt ratios, etc. In this video, we're going to talk about how you can be approved for a mortgage even if you have bad credit. Hi everyone, my name is Ben and this channel is dedicated to all things personal finance. Because school may have taught you the Pythagorean theorem, but it didn't teach you things that are actually important in the real world, like how to manage your money. Now, according to Experian Credit Bureau, anything less than a 670 FICO credit score is considered bad or subprime. However, all of the programs listed in this video will be available to people with significantly lower credit scores than that. First, be sure to check with your local and state-sponsored first-time homebuyers programs. Anyone who is a first-time homebuyer is going to want to do this regardless of their credit score. Now, programs are going to vary depending on what state you live in, so just type into Google the name of your state followed by first-time homebuyer programs, and you'll be taken to all of the different programs available in your area. For example, in my state of North Carolina, they offer the North Carolina Home Advantage Mortgage Program, which if you're eligible, you can qualify for up to $8,000 in down payment assistance, making home ownership just that much more affordable for everyone. Oftentimes, states give these types of down payment assistant programs or have other programs for people with lower credit scores, low income families, programs for veterans, first responders, teachers, etc. So be sure to check and see if there's any local programs that you can qualify for first. Now, these local qualifying programs, they work in conjunction with all of these other programs that I'm going to mention here in this video. Next up, we're going to go over a few government programs that offer loans to people with bad credit scores. And like I said, many of these programs can be combined with those state-sponsored programs. So let's start with a program that many people are familiar with, the FHA loan. An FHA loan is a fantastic option for many people because loans can be obtained for as little as a 3.5% down payment and a credit score of around 580 or better. That means if the purchase price of the house is $200,000, you would only need to have a down payment of $7,000. But if you have a slightly higher down payment and can afford a 10% down payment, which translates into $20,000 for that same $200,000 home, in that case, it's possible to be approved for an FHA loan with a credit score as low as 500. And if your score is under 500, well, in that case, you probably just need to spend a little bit of time working on your credit score. But the good news is that with credit scores that low, it's usually possible to make some pretty big improvements in a short amount of time if you're actively working on improving that credit score. Next up is an option for active duty members of the armed forces or veterans. Yep, it's the VA program. A VA loan is backed by the Department of Veteran Affairs and allows any qualifying service member and their qualified spouse to buy a home with no money down. As with FHA loans, your loan must meet specific standards to qualify, but with a VA loan, there is no minimum credit score. Instead, the overall loan application package is to be reviewed in its totality to achieve approval from the lender. Obviously, the higher your credit score, the better your chances of being approved, but if you can otherwise convince the lender that regardless of your low credit score, that there are other factors at hand that can easily tilt the scales of power in your favor and get you approved. Next up is a USDA loan, which is another loan backed by the federal government. In this case, the U.S. Department of Agriculture. A loan from the USDA allows you to buy a home in qualifying rural areas with a no money down payment. Now, most lenders will require a 640 credit score or better to qualify for the loan along with other income requirements specific to USDA. Now, when people hear about this program it is designed for owning a home in rural areas, they often dismiss the program thinking it's only for homes in the middle of nowhere owned by farmers, but that is simply not true. The official definition of what the USDA classifies as rural is extremely lenient. I'll have links below to the official website where you can type in a property address in the search bar and it will automatically tell you if that home qualifies under the USDA program. 
Now, I live in Raleigh, North Carolina, and as you can see, many of the surrounding metro areas, such as Clayton, Wendell, Zebulon, and others, all qualify as being rural, even though these towns have multiple tens of thousands of people living in them. In fact, there's areas that are only about 10 minutes away from the heart, the downtown area of Raleigh itself. So if you're only 10 minutes away from the city center, is that really rural? Well, according to the USDA, it is at least. So go check it out because you might be pleasantly surprised at what their definition of rural is. And if none of these options are working for you, be sure to go and talk to a lending manager at your smaller regional banks or credit unions to see if they can approve you. You see, the big banks like Wells Fargo, Bank of America, etc., when they give you a loan, they're just going to turn around and sell that loan to other government-based programs like Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. And those mortgages eventually find their way into the hands of investors or pension funds. But in order for the bank to resell your mortgages to these entities, the loan has to conform to a specific set of criteria. So if you aren't able to check all the boxes, if your credit score isn't quite good enough, then they won't be able to resell your mortgage, which means they're just not willing to provide you with that mortgage in the first place. But smaller regional banks or credit unions, they don't want to resell your mortgage. They want to hold on to that mortgage so they can keep collecting interest on it year after year. These banks are sometimes referred to as portfolio lenders. These types of lenders can originate loans based on their own set of criteria, and as such, they can literally do whatever they want because at the end of the day, it's their money that's at risk. Now, each of these lenders will obviously have a set of policies in place as to what loans they will typically approve or deny. But if you can make a strong enough argument as to why you should be approved for a loan despite your low credit score, you may be able to score a victory with these portfolio lenders. If you've enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and be sure to leave a comment as it really helps the YouTube algorithm. And as always, I'll see you all again next time. Thanks.